December 27th to 11pm, Wright & Co Law Offices. Hey there everyone, this is Danielle with some more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, we're in Turnabout Goodbyes, this is Day 3 Investigation. says memory of a murder, not of murder. So this flashback isn't accurate. Also, he didn't actually commit the crime, so, you know, whatever. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But he'd never take someone's life. Never. Yo, how's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swooning? Me? Oh, oh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth, it was like love at first sight, right? Larry. Larry, she's a child. And she's gay. Leave her alone. <laughs> Right, Nick? Huh? Me? I, uh, well, okay, that's kind of cute. Maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I ship it. <laughs> I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. <laughs> You really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That boat shop care deck, you guys, pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. I mean, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? From where I'm sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... Edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is I'm gonna believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? But, but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Hm, enough with silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. When we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, didn't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait. Was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles and Larry. They saved me from the beginning. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey Larry, what are you talking about? Huh? Oh, um... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Hmm. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm gonna hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A uh, class trial? You know, it's kind of weird that He's built his entire career after this one event that happened in third grade. Like, this is my entire life under this one thing that happened when I was a tiny kid, you know? <laughs> I can't remember things that happened in third grade. You remember Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in that class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Huh, I see. 
Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared, with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget that. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skipped PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said I should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we held a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I... I didn't do it. Guilty, he did it. Guilty, it was you. Thief, give the money back. You're such a meanie. No one played with him. Just admit you did it. You can't hide the truth. Tell us the truth. I'm not gonna play with you anymore. Yeah, no borrowing my eraser. You should be allowed in the relay race on the library committee. <gasps> Since I outlined you. Hey, did you rob that bank the other day? <laughs> it's so fast. Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Look at that little baby Phoenix. The back of his shirt looks so weird. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize, I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed, amateurs. M Miles? <laughs> Cute. It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? N no. Then you shouldn't apologize. Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent. Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it. He's the one. We don't need proof. Make him say he's sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? This is how- this is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Was Larry wearing any pants? <laughs> Very well. I'm gonna replace the money myself. Last trial is over. And that's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well... I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So I took it kind of personal, you see. Something smells is usually for bugs. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my father. A famous defense attorney. Then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably has to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a, of a, of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. 
I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it though. I wanted to meet him to learn why he become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet with me, whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one who can help him. Well, Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick. Nick? Nick? You have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop, Caretaker. I need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Go get some evidence. December 27th, Gord Lake Park, entrance. Hey pal, long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, huh? Hey. I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Looks fine to me, but okay. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean, the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may. It's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Eek! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. So yeah, we're not allowed to go into the woods anymore, but we didn't need to anyway. That, so that was just simplifying things a little bit. December 27th, Gord Lake, Public Beach. Huh? The steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Well, I mean, he's at our office right now, so... December 27th, Boat Rental Shop. That old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Uh, him. I know that clearing this route anywhere. Aha, hello. What might you be doing here? After a walk, hmm? Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, I'm not so sure about that. Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Hi. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here, anyway? Who knows? Uh... December 27th. Ugh, caretaker's shack. Nobody's home. Hello, hello, Squawk? Hey, it's Polly. I wonder where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello, hello, Squawk? Can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for herself. Hello, hello, Squawk? 
So what we're here for is uh, this safe. As you might remember, Polly knows the combination of the safe, and no one's here to stop us opening it. So let's go. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number of the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number of the safe? One, two, two, eight. Squawk. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Oh. But hey. Keeps it locked, right? There must be something of value in there. I'm not so sure. Okay, Nick, let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? How oh, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth? Nick, how would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm gonna read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. The rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth, pulling Edgeworth out of the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. Who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain, this letter is an amazing clue. A letter from the safe out of the court record. So yeah, that letter's what we needed to get, so we have it now. So, uh, let's... Is Polly already in here? Yeah, just want to make sure. I think we need to go over here now. December 27th, Police Department, Criminal Affairs. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe? He won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him, it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. Uh, we can talk to Edgeworth. December 27th, Detention Centre, Visitor's Room. You look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it, in third grade? Lunch money? Oh, alright. Oh yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple, to a fault even. Well, maybe yeah, but I think you changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. Hey, Edgeworth, why did you become a prosecutor anyway? You should look up to your dad. You said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. The suspect was apprehending your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator was my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. That defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago. 
Three of us were trapped in the elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. I have lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. When Yanni Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation, Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. I mean... Lack of evidence that he was the killer. Like maybe he wasn't the killer. You know? You know how, you know how evidence works, right? That's what. <laughs> What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of courtroom techniques from him. So, so he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He is a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he's obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, none were left unsolved, and not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But, but that's... I know, it's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Von Karma does is his job to find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, it's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do everything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? If what you're saying is true, you're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. It, he's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth! It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Well, that's about all we can talk about here, um, but we can ask uh, Edgeworth about the letter I have just remembered. So let's show him the letter. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm? This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge on me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant you got declared guilty or something? Nice, right. But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men, meaning myself and Robert Hammond. It also says this is your last chance. Last chance? Wait, maybe... Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the Dale 6 incident. Wait. Wait, that old man. W what is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. C could he be Yogi? Y Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident, the one who was found innocent. Danny Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. Quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long it felt like forever. The air thinned and the darkness closed in on, closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier! I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout, we'll use up more oxygen! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed, staring up at the ceiling. 
In court, Yanni Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me these last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. Interesting um, side note, these flashbacks in the original version of the game on the DS, which isn't the original version, it's the original English version, I suppose, these flashbacks were in black and white, like grayscale. Um, but in the 3DS version and in this version, they're not. I don't know why they've changed that. It's very weird. Anyway, it's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. See, I told you it was memory of a murder. That first flashback was wrong. <laughs> I think... I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing. In the dark. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You didn't use up more oxygen! I... I can't breathe! You! You're using up my air! But what? Stop breathing my air! I'll... I'll stop you! Ah, wh what What are you... Stop breathing my air! No! Father! He's attacking father! Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court, or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Bang. Wag. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone-chilling scream. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But, but, that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories in self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it, Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Wait, Edgeworth, you- you mean? It was me. I was the true criminal of Dale 6. I shot my father. This is bad. <laughs> Understatement of the year. <laughs> what are we gonna do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the Deal 6 incident, maybe... There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about Deal 6. Yeah, we have to talk to someone else who knows about Deal 6. <laughs> December 27th, Grossberg Law Offices. M Mr. Grossberg? Ah, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding! I can't believe you're not! My, 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 my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's Mr. Edgeworth. He... he... <laughs> I see. So Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. I wonder... What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? 
well, also consider this. Yoki quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, you want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the deed was done. N no I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder, and his career as a bailiff was irre irre irrevocably, irrevocably wrecked. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. What do you know about what do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer nerd, I think about it. Your mentor, Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man, forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result, he has a perfect win record in, in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost, and died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Faye. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. Yet Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right, everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. A possibility nonetheless. Oh ho! Oh. So this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. Why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Though he was a free man, but socially he was ruined. You'll understand soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Yep, that's right, people. Hmm. Could it be... Manfred von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, von Karma. But wait, you're right, my boy! This is von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it! I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But, but that means... The, the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred von Karma himself. What does this mean then? Why would von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? If it truly was von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! But, but how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. 
Hmm. Vassar do not know. Yet I do know that one Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. Well, what do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. And what happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty Von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or to the mountains? Don't tell me he's ever been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? When Karma's gonna bring up DL6, you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. N no, no, it's not. It's called manslaughter. It's a different crime. <laughs> It's a completely different thing, it's not murder. <laughs> How do you not know this, Mr. Crisberg? <laughs> I know that. Why do you know that, Phoenix? It's not the truth. <laughs> I... I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick! Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. Police materials, hmm. Okay, so we actually do want to go to the police department ourselves to look for some more evidence. One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. December 27th, Police Department. Criminal Affairs. There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, oh, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma is in there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived actually. Von Karma's in the records room. N Nick, let's hurry! December 27th, Police Department, Records Room. Dusty as always. If you're only here just yesterday, I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. Von Karma. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says, Unsolved Cases, Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases? Nick! The file for DL6, it's completely empty! W what What are you doing in here? Nick! Von Karma! You! How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? W what are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? 
We're Miles' Edgeworth. We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Ahem. I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. M mentor. <laughs> okay, so... We're gonna talk to Von Karma here, and then we're gonna have to do something really, really terrible. Which is give him some incriminating evidence. Yeah, again. <laughs> because Phoenix is so bad at this. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? A romanticist who still can't shed that veneer of amateurism. Just like his father. Always second rate. Mr. Von Karma. You had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against a mere defense attorney? Why? Because he dealt the blow to your otherwise perfect trial record? Hmm. So you did. But what I don't get is... Why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival? That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean? You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth would hold a court tomorrow. We were right. So Von Karma is going to bring up DL6 in court tomorrow. So yeah, we have to actually give him this letter. Which seems like a gigantic mistake. Because he's the only one here, and we're going to give him this incriminating piece of evidence. Just like in the previous two cases. Because we're very bad at our jobs. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi. How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So, so you admit it? You, you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter? Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. W what N Nick, what is that thing? A stun gun for self-defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000? Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. Now, give me the letter. No! No! Whoa, what are you? N Nick, run! Ah! M Maya! Out of my way! Wah! Wah! So, yeah, um. We just, just gave that letter to the murderer. We now don't have it. And we were electrocuted by him. Why are we so bad at our jobs? The letter's gone, of course. And he took the DL6 evidence. All of it. Back to having no clues. Wait. Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? M Maya! Maya, open your eyes. Maya! The letter. Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? Why did we give him the letter? I... I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now, when we need her the most. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. 
Maya. Urgh, there has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya, she's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 Incident, Evidence Number 7, taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. One camel was holding this when Maya jumped in. DL6 bullet stashed in a pocket. I'll prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Next time, the final day, trial, the end of Turnabout Goodbyes. You can probably see where things are going based on what we've seen so far, but, you know, I look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye!